Last Sunday, when we reflected on the Epiphany, the visit of the Magi, we spoke about the identity of Jesus and the presence of Jesus in the flesh of humanity. And we'll find in all four Gospels, the early chapters of the Gospel uh, are dedicated to identifying who Jesus the Messiah truly is to confirm his identity among the people of God. And we'll find that in our readings today, which we have um, the baptism of the Lord, referred to in all four Gospels. And that first reading from Isaiah is important because it says, the word of God is alive. And when the word of God comes among us, it should not return empty. It will not return empty. Therefore, somehow, the Word of God must have a living presence for us. It must have a meaning for us. It must somehow reform our lives, change our thinking, ask us to consider new ways in the manner in which we live. That is bringing the Word of God to life. So I'd like to take this uh, occasion which we celebrate in our liturgy, the baptism of the Lord, and to allow it to come to life for us in some manner. Which causes me to wonder how we define ourselves. Who gives us identity? The opinion of others, perhaps our success, our popularity, how much we possess of the world's goods, are these the superficial issues that give us identity, or is there something much deeper in the living Word of God? So I'd like to discuss for a few homiletic moments some reflections on who defines me, and how do I see myself? How do I claim an authentic, reliable, and enduring identity as a person in the world. Reflecting on the re baptism of the Lord, I went back and I recovered a book, which I read many, many years ago, and I read more than once, by Henry Nouwen. Easy to find. I have a Henry Nouwen section in my library. It's called Life of the Beloved, and it's, the book reflects on the baptism of the Lord. And uh, in recovering this book, I read it on one occasion in 1992, and I wrote a journal uh, in the uh, dust cover of the, uh, of the book. And now when I went back to visit it again, I found this reflection, and here is a little part of reflecting on my own identity, prompted somehow by a reflection on the baptism of Jesus, since our baptism is a ritual statement of who we are. The baptism confirms us somehow in a sacramental and ritual way in our authentic and our original identity. Reflecting on that, here's part of what I wrote in 1992. Reflecting on becoming the beloved I am drawn to consider my own journey of life. Growing up in a competitive world and the exalted identity of the priest, so perfect and so desirable in a competitive world. And in my seminary, winning honors was admired to be an academic prize winner. And when it happened, I relished myself. And in 20 years at the Chancery Office, the halls of power, places of prestige, I played well. A world of doing the right thing, saying what was appropriate and acceptable, fitting into the system, I was assured of my value, accolades to my importance. Then one glorious day of painful rebirth, it lost its value. It did not fit. 
that which gave me value and identity no longer had meaning. And now to search for a new understanding of myself as blessing, to redefine my identity and recover my true value. And over a period of time, I listened in prayer. And the heavens opened, and I heard a voice, Clement, you are my beloved son. And I said, say it again, Lord, say it again, I prayed, lest I forget. Finally, a reliable, enduring, life-giving, unmerited love will define who I am. This is my authentic identity. And I finish, praise be God, for these years of new life. I am you. I am every person. I am the undocumented person seeking a new life. I am the one in a second marriage, coming to a community of faith, asking for hospitality and dignity. I am the gay man and the gay woman coming into a society, into a church, or into a family saying, call me my, your son, call me your daughter, accept me with the honor and dignity of a child of God. Not a stepson or a stepdaughter, but a living human being confirmed as the beloved one in the image of Jesus Christ. I am every man, and I am every woman. I am among the sinners, washed clean and refreshed in the living waters of the Jordan, the rivers of life. I am the one who hears the voice of God saying, whoever you are, you are a beloved son and you are a beloved daughter. Only when we have heard that voice and only when we have listened sufficiently in prayer, only then can we truly call ourselves disciples of Jesus Christ. Until that time, we are relying on external and superficial, changing and passing confirmations of our identity. So listen to the Word of God. Allow the Word of God to become alive. Pause long enough in silent prayer to hear the voice of God. You are my beloved son. Shut out all the other voices in your life. The voices that tell you you're not good enough. You didn't achieve enough. You are not important enough. You have to fight more. You have to merit more. You have to achieve more in your life before you become important. Listen to the voice of the living God saying, you are my beloved son and you are my beloved daughter, and my love for you is unmerited and unending. <laughs>